This one's for the listener who has been consuming YouTube videos and podcasts. They've installed the Deal Machine app so they can look for rundown homes and add them to their marketing list so that they can make a $20,000 finder's fee for finding a rundown house, passing it to an investor through the business model that we teach on this podcast called Wholesaling. So my name is David Lecko, and I created a process that's helped people close 10,000 deals in all 50 states. My guest today is Zach Booth, who's doing a million dollars a year wholesaling real estate exclusively through Driving for Dollars, which is that list where you find rundown homes, contact them, find somebody who would prefer a discount on their house just to get rid of it and sell it to you, and you get such a good deal, you could pass it off and make what's called a finder's fee. So in this episode, we're going to tell you guys the four, you know, here's one of the things I found people actually struggle with is they are not sure if the house is run down enough to add to their marketing list. And so we are going to answer that for you on this podcast. So Zach, I know that you like to break down the types of properties you'll find into four categories. What are the four categories for driving for dollars homes? Yeah. First is the properties that are like complete obvious. You can call them the turd properties. You can call them the worst of the worst. You can call it whatever you want, but these are the ones that look completely vacant. The, the, they may not be completely vacant. And when we, when I say vacant, there's just nothing going on in the house. The grass is long. They're overrun, boarded up. You can tell that there's, there's nobody really using the property or it's so run down tarps on the roof all the sidings falling off the house. I mean, the bad, bad ones, right? That's that's the first one. Then the ones that are absentee owner on title. So may, basically what that means is the owner's address or the mailing address is different than the property address, but it's still owned in the person's name, okay? That's what I mean by absentee owner. And the, and the next one is owner-occupied. So the person's name, the mailing address, the property address, it's all the same. Corporate-owned, it's kind of like absentee, but it's owned under an LLC or a trust, right? So yes, the owners don't live in it, but it's an LLC or a corporate. Kind of like an absentee is just an entity that owns it is not a person. So those are the four subsections of our driving for dollars list that we break up and we actually do different types of marketing. We get a different ROI. There's certain outreach strategies to these subsections of our list that work better. So those are the four things that we that we market to. So here's some of the questions that are, are coming in to me frequently is if I see an absentee owned property, meaning that there is a tenant in the house, they say, if I add that to my driving for dollars list and I say, start mail, is the mail going to go to the tenant or is it going to go to the owner? So the answer is you want to send mail to the owner. Um, and in fact, that's what the deal machine app is designed to do. Another question is, Hey, that house looks pretty run down, but I didn't add it because I saw that it was owner occupied and I'm really curious how effective your owner occupied D for D homes are Zach, but I've noticed most people ignore those owner occupied rundown homes, but most of my deals that I've done, the 19 rental properties that I have, that most of them that were driving for dollars were actually owner occupied. 100%. I feel like it's a big opportunity because most of the think that's not good. Yeah, 100%, right? They, and I've got these questions over the years of coaching and teaching this, right? I, I did like a half a million my first year driving for dollars, right? It's my second year wholesaling. And then I started teaching people. And the more I taught them, the more questions like this I got. Well, I don't know. Like, what should be the criteria? How effective is only the really, really run down ones? How effective is absentee? How effective is corporate? Um, you know, should I add any physical signs of neglect or just the obvious? Right? So I had all these questions. So I had to have data behind it. That's why I broke my list in different sections. And I have different tracking phone numbers on my postcards for all four of these lists. I have different cold calling campaigns for every one of these lists. I have different texting campaigns for every single one of these lists. So I know exactly how many postcards go out and exactly how much I spent and how many uh, uh, leads, how many people raised their hand and said, yes, I want to sell. And how many of them turned into appointments and contracts. It's so I know my ROI and why I do what I do with each subsection of our list. So the first thing is, should I add it? It's kind of run down, but it's kind of not. Should I add it? The answer is yes, 100% of the time. Right. There is, if any physical signs of neglect, regardless of the ownership type, 
at it. Right. Correct. Doesn't matter if it's corporate owned or not. Uh, one thing on corporate owned, though, that I did want to mention, um, um, a lot of times if we want to call or text the homeowner, do you do any calling and texting, Zach, or do you just use rec mail? No, I do a lot of cold, cold calling and texting, but that corporate owned is the only one that we do not text or cold call. Why is that, by the way? The accuracy of the phone numbers. There is one way to get accuracy of phone numbers, and we'll do this if the house looks vacant and it's corporate. Bro, I uh, was wondering what your method is. What's the one way? Oh, if it's, if it's, hey, how do you do that? Yeah, so if it's, if it's corporate owned, we usually only send postcards to it. So okay. it's like, okay, it's got some problems. It's deferred maintenance. Like most rentals, we'll send a postcard. Just one. That's it. But if it's vacant, looks run down, it's like, oh, wow. W what we'll do on deal machine, and this is, doesn't matter if it's corporate, absentee, whatever. If it looks vacant, run down, completely abandoned, on deal machine, there's a functionality. As soon as if you have to tap the ad version on, and you touch the property, you can add, there's a there's a little thing that'll pop up the address and a little bit of information. There's a little thing that looks like a price tag. If you click on that, you can title it or give it a specialty tag. And we call ours the Hayden List because that's our main guy that goes and works those leads. Hayden, so who you are? Yeah, he is this team. Yeah, he negotiates over a million dollars a year in wholesale fees himself. Oh wow. Yeah, he's a beast. He's a beast. He's my business partner in my real estate fast home buyers brand, right? So that guy's incredible, but that's why we call it the Hayden's list. It's his, it's his, his favorite list, right? So it, there's there's absentee owner, uh, corporate owned, owner occupied um, on that subsection of our list, but we'll text it, we'll cold call it, we'll send post postcards, and that's the only subsection of our list that will go door knock if we still haven't been able to get a no out. We want a no out of everybody on that. I, w I wanted to get your feedback on something corporate owned that um, I just learned myself. Um, mm. I'm going to share my screen real quick. I uh, To find a corporate owned property, let me do a quick filter, corporate owned. Uh, so it's going to highlight those. So let me click one of the highlighted ones. Are you? Do you do the video on, on yours? On your yes. Yeah, yeah. The podcast is like video. If you're on YouTube, you could see this. Um mm. So if you're not on YouTube, definitely want to go check out uh, the Deal Machine YouTube channel. There is a podcast playlist on there. But So this is owned by um, Owens Asset Management, LLC. And there is no contact, like a skip trace contract. But something we just like found out is like we've got a private investigator tool that lets me see a layer deeper um, into like who the officers are of that company. And that particular one actually did not have any, but I wanted to show you because since I've been looking at these now, um, it's actually like more often than not given me the owner of the LLC. So I just, uh, so here's, yeah. is that, is that pulling data from like opencorporates.com, like the federal websites? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's pulling the LLC, uh, data, HB2 rentals, LLC. Um, and so this has two associated officers and Diane Bowers like keeps coming up, right? So there's three Diane Bowers in the entire United States. And one of them lives in Indianapolis, which or Indiana, which is where this property is. So it's probably her. Um, and so then I can see she's 63 years old. She's a cash buyer, high earner, high net worth. She's a property owner. And she even has a family member listed down here. But um so yeah, I can link her to the property. Um, and then that that's on an individual property basis, how Hayden could uh, research this. Beautiful. We are going to, um, you, did you see how there's three Dianes basically? Mm -hmm. uh, it's because we are ranking which one we think is the most likely. So right now, if you like exported this from Deal Machine, um, it, it wouldn't automatically do that linking for you, but um, it's just for like a one-on-one -on -one property research option. Um, we're going to add a feature that that automatically links the top ranked contact uh, for those. So I was just excited because you had mentioned Hayden's looking deep into these. So just curious, like, is it is this something that's useful or is this something that Hayden's are? Oh, you, this is new, guys. I didn't know about this because what we were doing is we we're taking those corporate owns and we we're using Deal Machine's info um, for the absentee owner occupied, um, uh, you know, 
properties that were on our third list, but the corporate owns, we were going to opencorporates.com and, and doing one more step. Now it's all right there with the deal machine. How cool is that? It is actually very, very helpful because then you can then skip trace or try and get phone numbers for that person off of the address and the person's name, right? So you, it's, it's you're going to get more accurate phone numbers and you can dial through those phone numbers and, and get a hold of them. But then you can also search that person's name in the databases and try and find their address. Um, huge, absolutely huge. You can go to True People Search, put in their person's that person's name, the mailing address, and probably find known relatives to that person. And 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 we found and we we have this on my Driving for Dollars Mastery podcast all the time of students deep diving that worst of the worst list that they're that they're tagging. And it doesn't matter if it's owner occupied, corporate, or absentee. It's funny a lot of times it says owner occupied and it's completely vacant. It's like well that's not possible, right? It's not owner occupied. So yeah. that third list, the worst of the worst. That's why we go out and drive in person. Sometimes the data that's available in this world is it's inaccurate. But when you go drive in person, it's a, it's as accurate as it gets. You see those things. That's our most profitable subsection of our list. And our goal is to get to know of all those people. And most of the time, people, that's the only list they're building. And they may only be adding two properties an hour, five properties an hour of driving. The people that I teach and my own team, I want them to be driving close to a hundred properties every single hour of driving. Because there's a huge subsection of that list that can become very profitable. It's just it's gonna take more mass outreach to that not so rundown house. Yeah. But more laser focused to that worst of the worst. So of those four sections, the worst of the worst is your most profitable. It's where most of our time and energy goes to. It's kind of the 80-20 rule. Yeah. Right? Hey guys, if you know you want to quit your job in the next three months, make sure you're subscribed to this podcast because we've got some incredible frameworks with step-by-step -step instruction that you're not going to want to miss. Also, leave us a rating and review to let us know your favorite parts and why you want to get financial freedom. So I think key takeaways for somebody wanting to start adding leads but has had analysis paralysis, not knowing what types of leads to add. You want to add any properties with any signs of distress, regardless of if they are owner-occupied or absentee-owned or corporate. You may be calling uh, the absentee-owned and the owner-occupied because the phone numbers are more readily available. Um, you may be doing direct mail to corporate, and that's a really good strategy. Now, if you're using Deal Machine, you may also be able to get the phone number on your corporate-owned properties uh, you'll have to go through them one by one to to research, but you get everyone in the United States with that name of the associate officer, uh, which is a powerful tool integrated with your property data right here. So, um, and then the biggest thing I think that Zach mentioned was really any sign of distress is okay to add. I wouldn't fret too much. If you're in a pristine neighborhood, but one property didn't shave their bushes, that's the one you're going to add. If you're in a really run down neighborhood, then... Um, you've got like a fire damaged one, right? You just, you're trying to find the properties that look worse than the rest of the neighborhoods. A any other simple advice to help get somebody over that analysis paralysis? No, I love it. Just making sure you use the tag on deal machine for the worst of the worst. So you're not, because if you're adding any physical size of neglect, you don't want your best properties to get lost in the mix of just a uh, okay property. So make sure you're tagging. It's a huge function that deal machine added that, has made me millions, seriously millions. And you've made many other clients that are using a project or product um, that I've coached, you've made them millions. Like it's a, it's a, it's a huge one. And let's leave them with, um, you, we created the whole tap to add mode for Zach because he adds a lot of properties per hour. How many properties per hour would you or Miguel add if you all were? About a hundred. About a hundred. About a hundred an hour. That's my take. So does he even pull over? No. To Adam? No. No. No, he doesn't. Um, the cool thing, yeah, I mean, he probably should. Uh, pull over, guys. Um, don't hit mailboxes and parked cars and, and, uh, and small dogs. <laughs> pull over. Um, okay, I love it, man. I, I've, I really wanted to talk about, so now they know, like, how many should add at any physical size to leg. This is why we break up our list, right? Because then the next most profitable subsection in your driving for dollars list is going to be your absentee. Okay. 
Okay, so if you're going to have to prioritize your time, we all have to, right? There's only so much time in the day and you're always going to be able to work more. So what you need to do is spend your time on the things that can get you the most money the fastest. So the first one is your um, turd list, your worst of your worst properties, your Hayden list, whatever you want to call it. Your second is your absentee owner. And depending on the market that you live in, you want to make sure you're driving in lower, you know, lower price point areas, right? Your, your below median house price neighborhoods is where most of your investor traffic is. So that's where you're going to want to work. And depending on the market you're working, you're going to probably see anywhere between 10% to up to 40% of the properties you own are are added to your driving for dollars list for absentee owner, right? And so the large majority of your list is not the absentee. It's not. So it's a smaller list. You're going to be able to dial through it way faster. Um, It's a smaller list. So if you send postcards to it, it's less expensive, right? And so... You know, that what I would do is when, uh, you know, if you guys watch my 40 day challenge where I made 93 grand in 40 days and I only spent a thousand dollars, I use the deal machine app and I cold called and I would prioritize. I'd get back from driving and, and I would, I would do morning and evening dialing sessions and I would dial through my turd list first. Then I would dial through my absentee list. And if I still had time, I would dial through my owner occupied and the dial counts on my dialing platform at the time I used Mojo Dialer. I got through my turd list and the absentee 15, 20 times, depending on the record. The older occupieds, I got through on average one and a half dials. Because that's how I'd prioritize my time. And if I got an appointment, I'd leave. I'd go on that appointment. I'd stop dying, right? And go try and get the contract. And so um, absentee owner is going to be a small subsection. So you can afford to do more marketing to it. And then from there, it's actually owner occupied. And the cool thing is I make more money for my owner occupied list than any of my lists combined, but it's like 70% of my list. So more marketing goes to that list than any other one. That's why I make more money is there's more data and more marketing that can be done. Got it. Yeah. Right. So my ROI on my, my money, it's, it's for, for each list, it's anywhere between a 7% of all of my revenue that I make goes to marketing. That's on the low end, right? To as much as is, it's 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 just under 20%, right? Of my marketing dollars from my gross income. So I, regardless, I'm getting a five to a, to a, over a 10 X on my ad spend. So basically for every dollar I make, right? I'm making about $10 on average with my driving for dollars list if you combine them all. So it's it's uh, extremely profitable. It allows me to pay my employees a ton of money, um, which allows to me to hire the best of the best, which allows me to not go do driving for dollars or do cold calling or go on appointments and smell like cat pee. Right. I don't have to do so any of that. I get to right. hang out with David Lecco. I get to hang out with David and do podcasts and help other people. It's amazing. And I get to go to them going, I'm jumping on a plane here in a couple hours to go to a hockey right. game in Boston. That sounds all good for you, Tom. Yeah, I would love uh, you guys. Yeah. If you want to get to where Zach's talking about, where you can build a business with systems that can be run by other people that can free up your time and spend more time with your family or doing hobbies that you love, subscribe to this podcast. But Zach specifically has got a podcast called DFD Mastery, Driving for Dollars Mastery. This is the best list that we recommend you start with as a new real estate investor getting into wholesaling because it is not easy to get that. Therefore, you'll spend less marketing to it because less people get it. And then they are going to be hearing from you instead of all these other investors. So you can drive around, look for rundown homes. If you have more questions, this is just a preview. Go check out uh, Zach's podcast, a DFD Mastery. And we will see you guys on the next episode of this one, Deal Machine Real Estate Investing Podcast. Thank you so much, Zach. Thanks for listening to the Deal Machine Real Estate Investing Podcast. Please leave us a review and follow along wherever you're listening to your podcast.